Okay. What is up, dudes? Uh, I apologize in advance. This video is gonna be a lot of talking again, so I hope you're prepared for that. All right, so as you can probably tell by the title of today's video, it's gonna be real similar to my last one, where I was talking about all the issues with my old engine, why it blew up, why I had all these weird problems, and what I'm gonna be doing differently to prevent those issues in this new rendition of this engine. This video, I'm gonna be talking about the engine itself, what parts I'm using, um, all the specs, kind of give you the rundown. Uh, let me uncover my cylinder head here. Give you the rundown of all the stuff that is going to be going into it and give you kind of an idea of what I'm shooting for with the engine, what it's gonna do. Also, side note, new camera. Thank you, Mandy, she bought me a new camera as a early Christmas present, so I really appreciate that. And I'm sure those of you watching this will appreciate it too. Look at the image stabilization. I'm like shaking the hell out of the camera right now. You probably can't tell. So for those of you that may not have watched my other video, uh, this is the base of the new engine. Obviously the block, the base, whatever. It is a 7AFE cylinder block with a 7AFE crankshaft and then 4AG pistons, 4AG oil pump, it's got custom rods from MRP in it, a uh, whole slew of fancy little parts and whatnot. This is the cylinder head, which is a 16 valve small port 4AGE cylinder head. This is the basics of building a 7AGE. First things first, uh, 7AFE cylinder block. I don't know if it actually says 7A on it. Anymore. Oh yeah, right here. There you go, you can see it right there, 7A on the cylinder block. So that basically means that the block is taller and the crankshaft has a longer stroke, making it a 1.8 liter instead of a 1.6. There's a lot of talk about that in my last video, so I won't get crazy with it. But <clears throat> we are using 4AGE pistons because they are matched to the cylinder head. So these are actually from Matrix Garage who collabed with Tron Pistons to design these. Um, I forget the exact specs. I think they were like 10 to one compression if they were in a 4AGE block, but with the longer stroke of the 7A, I'm gonna be pushing a smidge over 12 to one compression with all the specs that I have listed out. Side note, don't ever straight up believe the compression ratio numbers that are listed on a, uh, the numbers that are listed on a piston manufacturer's website, because a lot of the times they're wrong or they might not be correct for your application. So I'll link in the description the calculator I use to find my actual compression ratio using all the specs of the pistons, my bore size, the stroke, my actual squish gap, which is the gap between the top of the piston and the cylinder head, uh, all kinds of stuff. It all changes how the actual compression ratio is in the end. This is a <clears throat> AE92, yes, AE92 uh, oil pump. I believe they're like higher flow or stronger gears than the uh, early big port oil pumps. So a little bit of an improvement. Either way, still a 4AG oil pump. We are using, for the rotating assembly, we're using factory 7 AFE crankshaft that has been uh, fully balanced by the machine shop. Um, I'm hoping I don't have issues with this machine shop. Seems like they knew what they were doing, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, using MRP main bearing cap reinforcement straps, along with ARP studs and MRP, uh, what are these, H-beam rods? Yeah, H-beam rods um, with ARP hardware. So lots of nice parts here. I still don't trust this thing to rev past 85, maybe 9 if I'm pushing it. I've heard horror stories with factory 7A cranks not liking to rev that high. And since I'm not that much of a baller, I don't wanna buy a forged crankshaft. So we're staying OEM crankshaft, revving it to 8,500. And if the cams want to keep making power past that, I might rev it a little higher, but I don't like the idea of it, especially cause I drive cars hard. One more thing I forgot to mention, these pistons are actually uh, 82 millimeter bore instead of factory 81 or just a 0.5 over, they're actually a one mil over. 
and that was because I had .5 over pistons before, but because of the issues with the machine work on the block, I had to go a half mil bigger again and get them bored correctly this time. Now, moving on to the cylinder head, this is a CNC ported, you can see all that in there? I can't, I have no idea if this camera is focusing or not. Anyway, CNC ported cylinder head from Speedmaster Racing. Uh, they, it looks like they did a pretty good job. I mean, it's cool that the exhaust side is also CNC ported, but it was also wet blasted, so it's smooth in here. Um, for complex reasons that I won't get into, it's actually better to have a bit of a rough surface on the intake side, so it's the actual machining marks from when it was CNC ported still on the intake side. Uh, I want to get as much flow into this thing as possible. Uh, before anybody asks, no, I did not do oversized valves. Um, it just seemed like... Okay, well, no, it didn't seem like... It was me being cheap. I didn't want to spend the money to do oversized valves because it's a very large additional cost, which in hindsight can, seems kind of stupid that I didn't do it because I already paid for a freaking CNC ported cylinder head, but it is what it is. This is where we're at. As you can also see by these notches that are cut next to or in the lifter bores, um, I had to clearance it for very large lift camshafts. I did that to kind of offset the fact that I didn't use oversized valves. I'm probably going to get people that actually build 4AGs for a living telling me how I'm doing it wrong, but that's okay. I'm figuring it out as I go. <laughs> but uh, the cams are actually cat cams. Uh, I can't remember the actual part number off the top of my head, so I'll put it on screen. But they are, I believe, 10 and a half mil lift on the intake and like, maybe it's like 11. I don't know. I'll put the numbers on screen. Big lift somewhat moderate duration just because I want this thing to make power in the six to 8,000 RPM range. Uh, I do love myself a peaky engine, but this is going to be primarily a street car as well. And the whole point of doing a 7A, in my opinion, to begin with, is to get that mid range that a 4AG kind of doesn't have when you overbuild it. You can make a bunch of, <laughs> I say a bunch of power and by a bunch of power, I mean like 180 horsepower, but you can make a bunch of power up top, but it doesn't do anything until you hit like six or seven grand and then it slowly starts to pull and then it blah, screams to red line and then that's it. Uh, it's fun, but also kind of useless unless it's like a straight up, you know, time attack car or something like that, which why are you doing that with a 4AG to begin with? Anyway, so as you might be able to see, I actually have a little bit more clearancing left to do. I've done one side over here and not the other. Uh, these are all done all the way down. So I got to do a little bit of grinding. I'm just going to set up a time lapse for you guys. Uh, but I got to do that before I start assembling the valve train. And we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> So I went ahead and cut out all those little notches. I still have yet to make sure I have clearance, but I've done enough of them now on this cylinder head alone that I'm pretty sure I got it on point. And don't worry, I am still going to take the cylinder head and pressure wash out all those fine metal shavings that I just created uh, before we do any real assembly. But I do want to go over with you guys what my valve train setup actually is. This thing is amazing, by the way. I had never bought one of these before I started building this engine, and it makes my life so much easier. But uh, OEM valves, nothing crazy here. As I said, I went half-ass and didn't do oversized valves like I definitely should have, but here we are. These are the Kelford Beehive springs and titanium retainers. Uh, they meet the recommended specs from CAT cams for the spring pressure and the insulation height, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's basically it for the cylinder head. I think I've already drugged this out a little longer than I need to, but I just wanted to give you guys kind of a quick rundown of what I'm working with on the engine, what I'm gonna be using. 
I'll try to put links in the description to all the parts that I'm using if they're still available. Some of this stuff I've had so long that it, you can't get it anymore, like the header, for example. Um, I guess this is probably going to be part one of a video series of me getting this car, this car running and driving again. Hopefully there isn't a bunch of videos of me blabbing like this and not really doing anything. I want to actually make progress and show you guys what I have in store. I got a lot of projects, a lot of stuff to get done. So I hope you enjoy this content. Um, we're probably going to do more videos on this car as well, just because this one is kind of in the same boat as that, trying to get it back on the road. You saw the video of it starting, or if you haven't, go check it out. It sounds really nice. We still got some more work to do before the thing's actually drivable, but I'm gonna have Mandy helping me work on this thing because it is her car and she actually did most of the work on the engine itself. So she'll help out with the process. And I'm talking too much, I apologize. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end this. Um, hope you guys have a beautiful day. I don't have a catchphrase outro yet, so bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>